Taking a pre-treatment lateral cephalogram is beneficial for two ways. Firstly, it helps us to identify the dental and skeletal landmarks, which will help us to do the cephalometric analysis and come to the proper diagnosis for the patient. And secondly, it helps us to assess the growth status of the patient by visualizing the cervical uh, vertebrae in the same radiograph, thereby preventing us from taking or exposing the patient to unnecessary additional radiographs, such as the hand wrist radiographs, to assess the same thing, that is the growth status of the patient. Okay. Now, such questions regarding the maturation of the cervical vertebrae are very important as well as confusing questions which come in the exam. Now, the kind of questions that you can expect is either straightforward questions like such where they have asked you to only identify the stage, okay? Or sometimes they can give you slightly difficult questions where they can give you a case-based question and they do not mention the age of the patient. Rather, they can give you the clinical features and the radiograph of the cervical uh, vertebrae and ask you to uh, assess what is the growth status of the patient and then can you give the patient a particular type of appliance and also correlate the, uh, the cervical vertebrae maturation along with the mandibular growth uh, spurt and also to assess how much growth potential is remaining in this patient, okay? So such are the kind of questions you can be asked. So let's have a look at the different stages of cervical vertebrae maturation. So like I said, they can ask you to uh, correlate the peak of mandibular growth with the cervical vertebrae maturation. So this again is a very important uh, table to know because the timing of the peak of mandibular growth and the different stages has been correlated here okay now whenever you are assessing the cbmi there are two very important characteristic features that you have to note okay first is the inferior border of the inferior border of the c2 c3 and c4 okay which goes from flat to slightly concave to distinct concave okay distinctly concave and the second thing that you need to keep in mind is the shape of the uh, c3 and c4 okay so these are the two important things that you need so the shape of c3 and c4 goes from being a uh, trapezoid or wedge shaped okay wedge shaped to rectangular horizontal to square okay to rectangular vertical so in rectangular horizontal the length is more horizontally whereas in rectangular vertical the length is more vertically okay so there are six stages of uh, cbmi and you can give the acronym as i at dmc okay now let's have a look at all of the stages one by one so this is the cbmi stage one okay here the characteristic feature is that the uh, inferior border of c2 c3 and c4 is either flat or slightly uh, convex okay so here you can see it's slightly convex or it is flat now this stage is known as the stage of initiation and we can see 80 to 100 percent of growth remaining at this stage okay so whenever on the x-ray you see such a stage means 80 to 100 percent of growth is expected in this patient this is initiation now what is important about this stage is that uh, if you want to do any uh, face mask therapy okay so any face mask therapy or any rna along with face mask therapy for the correction of the maxilla in case of a retrognathic maxilla or a hypoplastic maxilla it is done in this stage okay because after this stage if you try to do a face mask therapy it is only going to give you dento alveolar effects rather than skeletal effects now this is stage two this is also known as the stage of acceleration okay here you can expect about 65 to 85 percent of growth now the characteristic feature of this stage is that c2 will have a concavity present okay c3 may have a slight slight concavity present or it may be flat and c4 will always be flat okay c4 will always be flat also if you try to see the shape of the uh, uh, c3 and c4 so here it is a proper wedge shaped correct it's proper wedge shape here it is trapezoid but it is slightly less trapezoid than 
in the stage 1. So it is transitioning from a trapezoid to slightly rectangular. So one th important thing to note is that these stages are not, uh, you, these stages are a transition. Like they happen gradually from one stage to another. It is not, uh, it, it does not happen uh, you know, it's not like this, uh, see, uh, what, whatever the uh, features we see in uh, stage 1 and when it goes to stage 2, there is no clear demarcation between the stages. There are, it is a gradual process. So, some uh, features of uh, stage 1 may be present in stage 2 uh, or stage 2 could be present in stage 3. This is because this is happening slowly and gradually. Okay, so here we can see that there is concavity in C2, uh, C4 is flat, C3 may have a, a concavity, slight concavity or it may be flat and here the, uh, uh, here the uh, shape of the C3 and C4 is transitioning from trapezoid to slightly rectangular. Okay, uh, this is known as the get ready stage. Okay, because the mandibular peak is going to take place one year from now. Okay. So here if we saw this, uh, CS2 correlates with one year from the mandibular peak growth. So when a CVMI2 stage is there and they ask you when will the mandibular growth, uh, peak of mandibular growth be expected, so the answer would be one year from now. Okay, so that is what is important in this stage. Now stage 3 is also known as transition. Okay, this is the transition stage. Now here what you will see is you will see concavity in C2, you will see concavity in C3, you may see concavity in C4 or it may be flat. Okay, And another thing to notice here is from trapezoid it is becoming rectangular. Okay, It is becoming rectangular. Now stage 3 is a very very important stage because this correlates with the growth of with the maximum growth. So the maximum growth in the facial structures is seen during stage 3. So like I told you, there is no clear demarcation between the stages and the maxim or the peak of mandibular growth takes place somewhere between C, uh, C3 and C4, okay. But however, CS3 is what is given as the peak of mandibular growth because this is when there is maximum amount of growth that is seen, okay. So any uh, functional appliances which are given are to be given during this stage. Now, during this stage, uh, there is around 25 to 65 percent of growth that is remaining. Okay, because we have now we are going to peak. Now, the next stage after that is the stage 4. Now, after stage 4, checking for the concavity on the inferior border is. Uh, is less important because by now, by after stage 4, all 3 will show uh, concavities on the lower border. So what becomes more important is the shape of the uh, C3 and C4. Okay, so here we can see again it is rectangular but it is slightly now shifting from becoming from rectangular to slightly squarish. Okay, now this phase is the deceleration phase. So Although there is growth that is taking place, the growth is slightly uh, going to start decelerating now. Okay. Uh, the next stage is the stage 5. So in deceleration stage, the amount of growth that is expected is around 10 to 25 percent of growth. Okay. And the next stage is the stage of maturation. Now in the stage of maturation, here they have become square shaped. So this stage is also known as the marshmallow stage. Because they, uh, these CV, uh, the cervical vertebrae appear like marshmallows which are stacked on one top of each other because they are square shaped here. Okay, so now again growth is going to reduce uh, drastically here. 5 to 10 percent of growth is only going to be remaining in this stage. Okay, uh, this is the stage at which if any anterior implants want to be placed in the patient, it could be done because uh, this growth is going to uh, start reducing now and the final stage is the stage 6 now this is the most difficult stage to uh, assess on the radiograph because it looks very similar to stage 5 but what this is the stage of completion and here there is little to no growth left okay so there is 0 to 5 percent growth so little to no growth is left uh, in this stage and uh, in the stage 6 what we see characteristically is that uh, they are all rectang uh, rectangular vertical. So here you could see that the, hori uh, the length horizontally and 
vertically was almost similar here you can see that the length uh, vertically is more than the length horizontally so this becomes a rectangular vertical shape okay with little to no growth left and also another thing that you can appreciate on the radiograph is that the cortical bone during uh, CVMI 6 stage is more better delineated so here if you see this cortical bone is, uh, appears more stronger so now if you come back to the question and try to identify the stage so what you see here is that there is a concavity present on C2 concavity present on C3 slight concavity is present on C4 not very prominent and also the uh, the shape is rectangular so this is a stage of transition